Okay, so in this video, we're going to be going over the layout of the Synchrodyne. We're not going to touch the Synchrodyne Expand yet. That's going to be its whole different kettle of fish. But today I'm going to talk about the different sections of the Synchrodyne, the signal flow, some of the inputs and outputs, and the general layout. Each one of the main sections is going to get its own video, possibly multiple videos, and the Synchrodyne Expand gets its own thing. The Synchrodyne starts with a VCO, a phase locked loop, and a filter and they're all connected. Each following component is related on the ones that precede it. So the general layout is signal flow starts with the VCO. The VCO feeds into the PLL and the PLL controls the filter. And if you're wondering how the PLL controls the filter, we'll get to that. But what you need to know is the VCO goes into the PLL, which goes into the filter. So they're all related in that way. The VCO is a pretty straightforward affair. It's comprised of these knobs and jacks, and then these outputs down here. So you have all of your normal suspects here, your usual suspects. You have uh, coarse and fine tuning. You have exponential and linear FM inputs with attenuverters, not attenuators, which I find interesting. Uh, your one volt proactive input and a hard sync input, which sounds awesome. Uh, you have a sawtooth output and then a pulse or square wave output. Note that there's no pulse width modulation on this one, uh, only on the Synchrodyne Expand. Uh, but the VCO is probably the most straightforward uh, part of this whole thing. Uh, it's a great utility VCO, sounds fine. And the frequency of this VCO by default will drive the PLL. So they're normal to each other. So with no external configuration, the PLL, its frequency is determined by the VCO. So what's a PLL? Well, that's going to that's going to get its own discussion. Um, but in short, a phase locked loop or PLL, its job is to match the frequency of one oscillator to another. So there's its own internal oscillator within the PLL and it's going to be putting out a square wave from the PLL output. Okay. That square wave is trying its very best to match the frequency of the VCO. Now if the VCO is, or whatever's put into its external input, if the VCO or whatever's going into the PLL is operating at a very constant frequency, its job is fairly simple. The challenge comes is what happens when there's rapid changes to the VCO, like we have a sequence going through it. The PLL has to constantly adjust for what's coming in. It's kind of like the reverse of a clock divider. It has to predict what the VCO is going to be doing next, essentially, especially if we're going to be multiplying the signal, which is what a PLL is very good at. So there's a couple of controls that dictate how it's going to behave. Uh, it's going to overshoot. It needs to be damped. It needs to be controlled. Uh, and these controls will do just that, and we'll go over those. Uh, but it ends up being a clock multiplier, and the Synchrodyne has ridiculously high rates for that, up to 1,024 times the input frequency. The, it has integer multiple multipliers uh, for tonal values, and then it also has the clock divider. Now, one of the themes that we're going to have going through this is that the Synchrodyne and the Synchrodyne Expand layout and labeling, I, uh, it, it can be confounding. It was for me especially. For example, uh, the VCO stands by itself, but if you wanted to use the PLL by itself without having a VCO normal to it, you might think to yourself, well, there's an input control for the filter, so if I want to put an external signal in, I would put it in here. Uh, well, that would be incorrect. This in jack is actually the... CV control for influence, what you want to put your external signal into is the clock input. So if you put the clock input something in here that breaks the normal from the VCO, so you could use the PLL and the VCO separately at the same time. Uh, so that's the PLL. Now the PLL, like I said before, the frequency of this drives the behavior of the filter. Pretend that sync one isn't there, it's just this part. Now, how does that work, you might ask? Well, the filter is a very special kind of filter called a switched capacitor filter. And reading up on them, I find them incredibly interesting. And we're going to have a video on the electrical theory behind that later, as well as the performance of that. But let's just leave it for now that the PLL drives the integral component of the filter, which are the capacitors. And this is a unique filter to Eurorack. I don't think it exists anywhere else. It might in some other modular formats. Uh, but this is uh, its own own thing here. So, 
So the input for the filter uh, is over here. So that's your filter in. It's a multi-mode filter, so you have uh, low pass, band pass, and high pass settings. Uh, this control here refers to the rate at which the capacitors are being switched relative to the PLL. We'll get to those, uh, but let's not worry about that just yet. There's also an integrated wave folder, uh, which you could turn on here. So the wave folder does the opposite job of a filter. So you can add frequency content to a signal before reducing it with a filter. Uh, there is a VCA, which is for the overall unit. So this will control the volume and that's pretty handy. Uh, and then there's a resonance CV control and a resonance knob up here. Uh, it will self oscillate and you can get a sine wave out of this, uh, depending on your PLL settings. Now you might be saying to yourself, self, why isn't there a cutoff frequency control here? And that's because the cutoff is actually determined by the frequency of the VCO. That goes back to the interrelated nature of the filter and the VCO and the PLL. So there's a couple outputs down here. Each of the wave folded outputs gets its own. So you can use those uh, separately, uh, but you've got a two pole or 12 dB per octave filter output. Uh, and then the wave folded version of that. And then you also have the uh, four pole or 24 dB per active output of the filter. That's the basic layout of the synchrodyne. The VCO drives the PLL, which drives the filter. Uh, you can use any of them individually. Uh, they're all very useful modules. They'll all get their own setup. Uh, and that is all there is to say about the layout of the synchrodyne by itself.